Hi everybody, and welcome to this BassettBiomechanics.com webinar. I'm Daniel Bassett, and today we're going to be talking about visual 3D for physical therapists and sports scientists. This is actually an answer to the needs of multiple labs that we've been working with over the last year. So basically, what we've seen in our experience is that a lot of physical therapy labs need to start with some basic training. We often have gone in and uh, taught some basic biomechanics. We also have found ourselves doing a lot of just practical training. And the real need that comes up is actually starting at this point because we finish the training and say, okay, here's a system, here's Visual 3D, go with it. And they say, okay, I want to do this, which is in this case, uh, a specific lab, studying Parkinson's patients, they're interested in the motion of the center of pressure during gait initiation. And we're daunted at how to do this in visual 3D. Now, it used to be that a lot of these labs that do biomechanics have an engineer on staff. So to cut costs, labs contact companies like BassettBiomechanics.com. And uh, we've helped several labs in this. Then we train them in how to use the software algorithms that we develop for them in Visual 3D so that they can go on and develop their own. Uh, we have a similar experience uh, with sports science labs as sports specific motions are so varied. So there is no canned answer to here's the analysis you should do. And every single time we're contacted, we get told we have a limited budget and we need it right now. And that's why we've created this new service, Visual 3D for Physical Therapists and Sports Scientists, as we're trying to provide the basic training that you'll need to understand the development that we're going to do for you and be able to tweak it to your needs now and in the future. Let's show you an example. So this is Visual 3D. If uh, you're not familiar with it, if uh, you're a new user, we will teach you how to do the basic stuff in Visual 3D. It's very important to get familiar with it. So what we always set up our customers to do is to use the pipeline feature. And what we developed here, this is for a lab at Florence, Italy, and they want to study jump performance. Now this is the training lab. Now all they had was a force plate. They had very specific ideas of how they wanted to analyze the data. So they contacted us and said, hey, we need somebody to make this for us. And that's exactly what we did. So we load this pipeline and then we just come over here and just click execute pipeline and it started. And we have this folder that would ideally be the subject folder and it asks what the weight and height is. Just click OK. So behind the scenes in these few seconds here live, we just analyzed and processed and reported data for about 30 different trials. You see, here's our list of trials loaded into Visual 3D. There was nothing loaded before. So let's look at the report. So you see here we have our cover page, which is set up exactly as the training lab wanted. And here you'd edit the name and last name of the subject. And then you can go see the separate pages for every single motion that was analyzed. Here we have a change of direction, a full description of exactly what it was, a table uh, summarizing the results and the graphs. And similar for hop, a hop jump, drop landing, a lateral jump. These are all very familiar. A 90 degree cutting maneuver, a broad jump. This is just a two leg jump as far as you can. And then a one leg jump, squat jump, counter movement jump, and then DPSI. Oh, wait, hang on. What is DPSI? Uh, we aren't familiar with what DPSI is. And due to their collaborations with the University of Pittsburgh, they've gotten into this uh, scientific analysis of a uh, stability index. And uh, they obviously wanted to continue using this type of analysis in their lab in Florence. So we replicated what they had in the literature. Uh, we made this special for them. And now we have it as part of our repertoire of available calculations. So this is a, a key example of what we do. We don't assume uh, most of you are particularly interested in jump performance, and that's not our point here. We're just showing you an example of what Visual 3D for physical therapists and sports scientists is. 
as uh, we're going to provide this for every single one of the uh, registrants. Uh, we're going to figure out what you need, how we can make that in a pipeline and model reporting form. And then we're going to present it to everybody as part of the training and extra tools so that everybody can benefit from it and you get something that's specifically made for you. Now, the cost of something like this can be very high, over $10,000 usually. And as you have seen on the website, the cost for the course is much lower than that. And uh, this is a sports example. I'd like to briefly show you one other example. As you see, uh, this is actually from that lab that's looking at gate initiation. If you're not quite sure what we mean by gate initiation, actually, it's uh, exactly what it sounds like. And it's that moment at the beginning of the motion that this lab was particularly interested in. So we had to go through and figure out exactly what defined each of those individual events during gate initiation. Here on the side, this is all the data that they were interested in, uh, the timing, forces, the location of the center of mass projection on the floor. A whole bunch of different calculations have been broken down into the events so that they can categorize them and compare them with the literature as they're studying Parkinson's patients and they want to compare it to other populations. Again, we worked directly with this physical therapy lab and understood what they needed and started developing for them. Now, what does it look like behind the scenes? This is the code that's run in the pipeline. Now, don't be afraid of this, as it's actually not as difficult as it might seem, and we train you in understanding what it means. But you see, this is the jump performance pipeline. A key part of this pipeline is that right here you see call script. That might not mean anything to you, but the important part of this is that we're using a different pipeline. So in this case, process FP. It's taking that data from the force plate and processing it. But it's not doing it in this script, it's doing it in a different one, which you see right here. This one is much easier to read. As you see, there are only three sections to it that are easy to edit. In this lab, their force plate was named FP1, which might work for most of you. But let's say one of your labs has a force plate named force plate, which is completely fine. This is a very subjective matter. Everybody can choose their own name for a force plate. And let's say the name was force plate. This is a simple example of how we're going to train you to simply edit the code so that it works for your lab. And another example is here we have a frequency cutoff of 20 hertz. Maybe you know that in your lab, it would be much better if the frequency cutoff is 15 hertz. For whatever reason, you know it should be 15 hertz. This is where you would change it. So instead of navigating this long pipeline called jump performance, you just have to find this process FP pipeline and edit the few uh, commands in that. The other advantage of this is this was done for jump performance. But you know what? This little module, this one pipeline, I'm calling it a module, is going to be present also in the gate initiation pipeline. So all you have to do is use the same one over there. It's going to look exactly the same, so you can just work with the same setup that you're already familiar with. So that's the basic idea behind the scenes. So let's talk about what Visual 3D for physical therapists and sports scientists really is. You start off by getting basic training. Uh, we strongly believe in our Visual 3D Basics series, and uh, it actually has been our most popular over the year, uh, very successful in getting a lot of labs started. It gives that foundation that you're going to need to really understand all the models and pipelines and reports that we're developing for you and are going to be present in the Bassett Biomechanics Repository. And you see that Bassett Biomechanics Repository doesn't exist online yet, but it will in March. And this is where all of these special codes are going to end up and you can use them as you need and tweak them as you need for your lab. Again, this is going to be developed largely based off of 
those that uh, sign up. Now we have a few basic uh, pipelines and models and reports that we're going to present so that uh, you can follow along as many labs do variations of data analysis. And then the rest, we're really going to try to leave it open, get as much input from all the signups. Then we're going to do interactive online training. Starting mid-March, we're going to be explaining to you every single one of the components of the repository so that you can tweak them and edit them for your own purposes. Like I said, you get one pipeline request as well. The sooner you sign up, the easier it will be to develop this for you. And there's one optional element, uh, as you'll see on the website. The Visual 3D for Physical Therapists and Sports Scientists also has an expert edition, and that includes Visual 3D Expert Builder. So the Expert Builder goes beyond Visual 3D Basics, where Visual 3D Basics is eight hours to start getting into Visual 3D. Expert Builder is actually 15 hours of training, five dedicated to modeling, five to pipeline, uh, design and five to reporting data and they build on Visual 3D basics. We highly recommend this because the more you understand the Visual 3D, the easier it will be for you to understand what we're talking about in our online training and the easier it will be for you to tweak the code to your liking. So the timing of all this, Visual 3D basics starts in January, mid-January. And the expert builder starts in February. Once we're done with the modeling section, that's when Visual 3D for physical therapists and sports scientists is going to start. So you already have a solid foundation of uh, all the basics and modeling. And we move on from there in the training for the separate codes. Really hope uh, to see you in the series as one in the business of helping biomechanics labs. So if this is something that can help you, by all means, let us know what we can do for you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. You can always contact me, info at bassetbiomechanics.com. So thank you for being here and have a great day.